Hey guys, welcome to another game of Android Netrunner from Octagon. Today I'm playing Leela and I'm up against Blue Sun. Uh, the one thing to note is this is a pre-ordering chaos game. I decided to get it up before it was completely irrelevant. As always, the decklist is in the description below as well. It's gone through some modifications, but you can try it out for yourself and see where some tweaks can be made. At its core, it's pretty much the same as it's ever been. Snitch is one of the cornerstones of it, especially at the moment because with a lot of people playing Grail and with Genteki so prominent, you kind of want to know exactly what you're about to run into. Unfortunately, I don't draw it in either my starting hand or my mulligan hand, so I have to do the traditional criminal opening of putting down a fairy and running for it. I run into a mother goddess, which isn't too dangerous. Pretty cool piece of ice to have in blue sun as well, because you can bounce any resed piece of ice, and then it won't be picking up subtypes. But as they were trying to keep mother goddess without any subtypes, I was able to sneak in and get a three-pointer, as you just saw there. So, three points off the bat. Unfortunately, we run into a bit of difficulty with Octagon here. I can't use Leela's ability for some reason, so I try to bounce the ice, doesn't work, but uh, thankfully my opponent does it for me, gracious enough to do that, despite losing three points in the process. So with that, my opponent is pretty much back at square one. They have to do the, what you'd call the opening move, icing up the servers again and taking a credit, so not the ideal start for Blue Sun here. I decided it would also be a good turn for me to kind of build up, find the pieces of the puzzle that I need, maybe find my snitch at some point. This works to my advantage as well, because obviously I want as many unrezzed cards on the board as possible, whereas Blue Sun wants to try and get ice rezzed, start bouncing it around, confuse you a bit, and build up their money at the same time. My opponent goes for a remote play, but not advanced, so I don't need to be too worried, I think. I hope, at least. I decide to have another poke at R&D, it served me well the first time around. My opponent decides not to res, I access, and unfortunately for them, it's another agenda. Even if this unadvanced card was an agenda, it's unlikely my opponent would try to score it. It would leave them very open to Leela's ability and therefore criminal tricks and shenanigans as well. But because they went to such effort to set up this remote, I decided to pop the card back into their hand. Five points to the good early on. I thought this was going to be a fairly easy game, but as you can see from the timeline, it wasn't quite so straightforward. So after that setback, my opponent goes for another remote server. Again, puts an unadvanced card in it, so I'm not going to be too worried about it at the moment. Instead, I think it might be trying to goad me into a run. Maybe it's a trap, so I decide instead to go for the economy, make sure I remain on a par with them, just so I'm not uh, leaving myself open to Sea Source and Scorch. Makes it a little more difficult with Logos, but it can happen. And as this turn shows, maybe I should have been a little more concerned about it as they start advancing the card, but uh, they leave it there. So now I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm not entirely sure how aggressive I should be, what kind of nasty ice is there, or if it's just a trap waiting for me at the end of it. So instead I try and poke elsewhere, perhaps Mother Goddess is in front of it, in which case I'm just not getting in because I can't get to my inside job. Instead I find that Mother Goddess is in HQ, and as you can see the temptation is there, instead I decide to go for the safe option, try and set up for the future, go for a Katie Jones instead. I have a 5 point to 0 lead at the moment, it could be 5 points to 3, but at least then I'd get access to whatever server I want, plus a card. Instead, they just set themselves up some more, which again, it confused me, and it convinced me that waiting was the right option. Maybe it was a trap after all. But again, how wrong I was. I thought that they might be trying to get me to burn an inside job on it or something like that, but instead they're able to advance it. Turns out to be a Project Atlas, so possibly not as bad as it could have been, but unfortunately it's over-advanced, so it means that they get access to whatever card they want at whatever time they need it. I do too because of uh, Logos, so I decide to go for the Plascrete, at least then I might run a bit less fearfully. Now ordinarily you might see Wayland get a little bit greedy maybe and go for the two advancement uh, Project Atlas, but this is the perfect way to play against Leela, because while I get to bounce a piece of ice, they get to put it right back where it was, so they don't really lose out, I'm not able to run rampant, as I would obviously like to. So where do I go from here? Well, first protocol is to run HQ, see what I'm facing up against. I see a shadow, so an interesting piece of ice, but it's very clear what my opponent is going for. I obviously want to go for the tags, so I'm very glad that I got the Plascrete in hand. And unfortunately, Leela has zero link, so it means you get Trace an awful lot and it can get quite expensive. Now, Andy, on the other hand, obviously needs it, because nine cards at the start, that's not quite an identity, is it? That has no power at all. Oh, wait. I play it safe to round out my turn. I just take my money, I put down a Plascrete. So I'm in a bit of a safer position, I have the protection that I need, I have the money, keeping on a par with my opponent, so it's not too bad. Of course, it can all change, and with Blue Sun it invariably does. But it's on this turn that the game starts to change, my opponent is able to ice up a little bit, and then oversight AIs a Janus, which is protected behind another layer of ice. 
and this starts throwing me through a loop. So I finally draw my snitch and of course that's going to hit the table. It's one of the cornerstones of this deck. There's three of them in the deck so I might as well use it. Run R&D, Mother Goddess is exposed and I should have continued because A, it picks up a sentry type and B, they'd actually have to spend money on it. But the biggest mistake I made was not running this Janus server. Sure, I mightn't have been able to get through the ice, but at least I could know what it is. I could know what was protecting the Janus and how scary exactly it is. If it's an ice wall, it's not something to worry about. Sure, making them res it won't set them back too much, but at least it's another piece of ice resed. And if Mother Goddess does get resed, it becomes a barrier, which is much, much easier to deal with. And here we go again. There's another unadvanced card down below on the remote server. I didn't go for the last one and it turned out to be a pretty big mistake. Will I go for this one or will my opponent just try and bait out a trick? I haven't used inside jobs or anything like that yet. So my opponent is probably thinking, get one out now, make him run face first into a Janus and then I can just start putting in something in its place once the fairy is burned, once inside job is burned and so on. Instead, I managed to run HQ and I pick up another agenda. So... Ice on RD is getting bounced and now I have a bit of time to use it. So put down the keyhole and make a keyhole run. Might as well get some value for money out of this. It's not the most exciting keyhole run. There's no agenda to win the game, unfortunately. So I just have to make to do with a snatch and grab because I happen to like the resources that I've got down. I've invested a significant amount of money with Katie Jones and I want to keep her around a while. And once again, Blue Sun finds itself in a position where it has to build back up. Bounces the ice back from HQ, so that shadow could go anywhere once again, but it hasn't really deterred me from running. And look at this, once again my opponent is able to just advance the card that's been sitting harmlessly in the remote. Uh, has clearly learned my pattern that I won't run on advanced cards, but then they can take a turn, build themselves up a bit, and then advance at will. I don't really see a way into the remote on this turn, try to build myself back up, try to find some money or tools or anything that'll get me into the server, but no joy. Now curiously, my opponent advances to 4 and then just is happy to leave it there, obviously safe in the knowledge that it's going to be protected regardless of what I try to do. With no inside jobs coming, I have to just build up my bank and make a straightforward run. My opponent did get to learn how Snitch works today. It's not a card that's played all that often. It can be quite good because it is a once per run effect, which isn't bad at all. So I do get to see what this piece of ice is, turns out to be a Janus. They've already said they're not going to res, but... They do have an opportunity to res after I decide if I want to continue or not, because the snitch expose window happens before you even encounter it, for example. I've probably used the wrong term there, but let's roll with it. So I decide I'll continue on. They don't res the Janus, run straight into a wall of thorns. That does hurt, especially as it hits my code gate breaker. And now it's even more problematic. They get to take back their money. They get to advance that card. They suckered me into that quite nicely. So my opponent was very brave and fortune favours the brave. A 5-3 agenda gets to res the Janus for free. So either that's going to be solid protection for whatever card should go down there in the end or it'll be a nice 15 credit boost for nothing. After failing to find, after failing to find the necessary tools to get into that remote I decide to search for the inside job with my logos. Might as well go direct to the source. And then my opponent is able to simply ice up, make everything nice and safe and ensure that I can't just sneak a win. All I need is one point. But things are looking pretty ominous, especially with the overscored Project Atlas. This turn I make quite a few mistakes. I was getting a bit desperate, I have to say. So I run R&D, Mother Goddess gets res, and that bounces me out. Then I decide I'll make the keyhole run, because I know it has the sentry subtype now. And then I burn my fairy. So I'm burning through icebreakers at this stage, really trying for the Hail Mary shot, and nothing's coming off. And here we see the true power of Blue Sun, because Mother Goddess now has a subtype of Sentry, of course, because of the Janus. They're able to simply pick up the Janus, A, removing the subtypes from Mother Goddess, B, getting 15 credits. Not bad for a day's work. And in case there was any fear over their financial state, Blue Sun is able to then play all the money cards. As some would say, it looks like I'm pretty much dead in the water. I'm able to put down a fairy and get some money, but I'm running out of time at a rapid rate. Here my opponent is able to use their Project Atlas counter at long last. Obviously they have the agenda in hand, so instead they go for the toll booth, uh, which is one of those pieces of ice that I can't deal with at the moment. Piece of ice goes down, another piece of ice goes on top of that. So, what is where is the question. I have already seen Wall of Thorns, Mother Goddess, I know toll booth is somewhere, there's a Janus about, there are so many scary cards and I'm short on clicks. I may be short of I may be short of actual icebreakers, but in hindsight I have a femme sitting in hand, 
Its purpose is to be able to bypass whatever piece of ice is there. If it's a Janus, it'll be four credits. If it's a Wall of Thorns, it'll be two credits. I mean, that should have been the icebreaker that I put down. That's why Inside Job Femme is such a killer combination. But in the end, I chose Corroder, hoping that Wall of Thorns was somewhere instead. Perhaps the Project Atlas counter would be a bluff and double bluff. But it wasn't. There's the toll booth, and that is that. My opponent is able to advance their agenda three times and win the game, coming from quite a poor position at the start of the game where it looked like it could have ended in five minutes, but they held their nerve and they played very well and managed to sneak out the win as well. My opponent was good enough to show me what pieces of ice were where. It turns out Mother Goddess was the last piece of ice, so that would have been rendered pretty useless. Uh, Wall of Thorns ended up over HQ, so that was no good to me or my Corroder. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you learned how not to play Netrunner. And hopefully you'll stick around for some more.